गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू जितेंद्र अकेडमी सो टुडे इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द फिफ्थ चैप्टर ऑफ फिजिक्स क्लास सेवंथ आई सी एस सी दैट इज हीट इन दिस क्लास वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज हीट एज अ फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट टेम्परेचर देन वी आर हैविंग इफेक्ट्स ऑफ हीट देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट इन ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट फर्स्टली वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट कंडक्शन एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन देन वी आर हैविंग कन्वेक्शन एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन then we are having radiation and its application and the last of chapter topic we are having thermos flask so let's get started so before starting this chapter first of all we should know the basic definition of heat so what do you mean by heat actually heat is a form of energy which causes sensation of warmth or cold to an object means whenever we are touching to any object that object is giving a sense of warm or sense of cold that form of energy or that energy is known as heat clear the definition of heat so next we are having for example here we are having two beakers so in the two beakers water is there whenever heat is coming inside the water from the environment whenever too much heat is coming inside the water means this water starts to heat up okay and whenever from the water heat is going out of the water and when heat is going out of the water you can say this water is becoming cool okay whenever heat is going to any object that object is becoming warm whenever heat is coming out of any object means the object is becoming cold okay so uh, in accordance with the heat actually heat is a form of energy which enable us to sense that which object is warm and which object is cold fine so next we are having in relates to temperature how heat work actually whenever we are given too much heat to any object giving heat to object means the temperature of that object rises may whenever we are giving heat to any or heat energy to any object the temperature of that object rises and this object will become warm and similar manner if we are giving heat energy out from that body if heat energy is coming out from that body you can see the temperature of that liquid or that object falls and that liquid will become cold so two things are there either temperature can fall or either temperature can rise whenever we are giving too much amount of heat to any body in that case temperature increases and whenever we are taking heat out from any body in that case temperature reduces so next we are having heat is the energy transferred from one body to the another body due to temperature difference whenever we are taking any object and we want to heaten up this object how we will heaten up first of all we will tong and we will put that object into the fire okay till the point when the temperature between this fire and this object will become same till that point this object will heaten up okay so what do you mean by in this temperature difference temperature difference means whenever two objects are there of different temperature firstly this object is having low temperature and fire is having high temperature okay and when we are combining these two different temperature heat is going to move from higher temperature to the lower temperature and till that point heat will move till both the temperature of the object is going to same okay so this way you can learn that heat can always move from higher temperature to the lower temperature so here we are having the example that how heat move from high temperature to the lower temperature for example in this cup we are having hot tea hot tea means temperature of this tea is very much high but if we will do the comparison between the tea and the environment in the environment temperature is less as compared to tea so here heat will move from which heat will move from higher temperature to that of lower temperature so in a case of tea the heat flow from tea to the environment or you can say higher temperature to the lower temperature but in a case of ice cubes actually ice cubes are having low temperature in ice cube temperature is low but the environment temperature is high as compared to ice cubes so this temperature or this heat will move from higher temperature to the lower temperature when heat move from higher temperature to lower temperature ice cube starts to melt in a case of ice heat is flowing from environment to the ice clear or from the higher temperature to the lower temperature next topic we are having unit of heat as we know each and every physical quantities are having its own unit like they are having si unit they are having cgs unit in a similar manner heat is also having some its si unit as well as its cgs unit so si unit of heat is joule you can represent it by capital j and cgs unit of heat is calorie okay these you two units you have to learn as a si and cgs unit of heat now we are going to see the relation between si and cgs unit of heat so here we are having the relation as you know calorie is the cgs unit and joule is the si unit 
सो हेयर इज द रिलेशन बिटवीन सी जी एस एंड एस ए यूनिट ऑफ हीट दैट इज वन कैलरी इज इक्वल्स टू फोर पॉइंट वन एट सिक्स जूल और यू कैन ऑल्सो लर्न लाइक दिस वन कैलरी इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली इक्वल्स टू फोर पॉइंट टू जूल इंस्टेड ऑफ वन एट सिक्स और यू कैन राउंड ऑफ यू कैन राइट फोर पॉइंट टू जूल नेक्स्ट वी आर हैविंग डेफिनेशन ऑफ वन कैलरी सो इन विच केस यू विल से दैट येस दिस हीट इज़ हैविंग वन कैलरी ऑफ यूनिट सो एक्चुअली हेयर यू हैव टू टेक वन ग्राम ऑफ वाटर एंड वट वी हैव टू डू हेयर एक्चुअली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर बाई वन डिग्री सेल्शियस ऑफ दिस वन ग्राम वाटर और यू वॉन्ट टू डिक्रीज द टेम्परेचर ऑफ दिस वन ग्राम ऑफ वाटर बाई वन डिग्री सेल्शियस इन बोथ द केसेज यू हैव टू आई दर गिव द हीट एनर्जी टू दिस वन ग्राम और यू हैव टू टेक द हीट एनर्जी आउट फ्रॉम द वन ग्राम ऑफ वाटर एंड दिस अमाउंट ऑफ हीट एनर्जी एब्जॉर्ब्ड और रिलीज्ड बन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ वन ग्राम ऑफ वाटर इज रेस्ड और लोअर्ड बाई वन डिग्री सेल्शियस इज नोन एज वन कैलरी क्लियर द डेफिनेशन ऑफ वन कैलरी सो हेयर वी आर हैविंग बिगर यूनिट एज वी नो कैलरी एंड जूल आर द सी जी एस एंड एस सी यूनिट ऑफ हीट एंड किलो कैलरी इज द बिगर यूनिट ऑफ हीट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेजर द हीट इन द बिगर यूनिट दैन वी विल यूज किलो कैलरी सो एज वी नो इन वन किलो कैलरी किलो मीन्स थाउजेंड सो वन किलो कैलरी मीन्स थाउजेंड कैलरी एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू राइट इन द फॉर्म ऑफ जूल सो वन किलो कैलरी इज इक्वल्स टू फोर वन एट सिक्स जूल और यू कैन राइट लाइक दिस ऑल्सो वन किलो कैलरी इज इक्वल्स टू फोर टू जीरो जीरो जूल दिस रिलेशन यू हैव टू लर्न बिकॉज दिस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू क्लियर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक वी आर हैविंग टू मेजर द टेम्परेचर बाई सेंस ऑफ टच इफ आई एम हेयर हैविंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल हॉट वाटर एंड हेयर आई एम हैविंग आइस कोल्ड वाटर सो हाउ आई कैन से दैट यस दिस इज अ हॉट वाटर दिस इज अ कोल्ड वाटर ऑब्वियसली बाई पुटिंग माई फिंगर्स इन टू दैट वाटर आई विल से दैट यस दिस इज अ हॉट वाटर दिस इज कोल्ड वाटर ओके सो हाउ वी आर डूइंग दिस सी केयरफुली फॉर एग्जाम्पल हेयर आई एम हैविंग हॉट वाटर एंड आई पुट माई फिंगर इन टू द हॉट वाटर सो वॉट आई विल से आफ्टर पुटिंग इन टू द हॉट वाटर आई विल से दैट येस दिस वाटर इज हॉट ऑब्वियसली दिस वाटर इज हॉट बट येस वेन आई विल टेक दिस हॉट वाटर इन टू अ ल्यूक वॉम वाटर ल्यूक वॉम वाटर मीन्स दैट वाटर विच इज नॉट टू मच हॉट दिस इज नॉट टू मच कोल्ड सो इन दैट केस यू विल से दैट येस दिस वाटर इज कोल्ड वाटर वाई बिकॉज इन कंपेरिजन वेन यू विल से दैट एक्चुअली दिस वाटर इज हॉट बट इन कंपेरिजन ऑफ हॉट वाटर वेन आई पुट माई फिंगर इन टू द ल्यूक वॉम वाटर आई विल से दैट इट्स वाटर इट्स कोल्ड ओके एंड सिमिलर मैनर आई एम हैविंग फॉर द आइस कोल्ड वाटर वैन माई आई एम पुटिंग माई फिंगर इन टू द आइस कोल्ड वाटर आई विल से दैट येस दिस इज कोल्ड वाटर बट वैन आई विल टेक माई फिंगर आउट फ्रॉम कोल्ड वाटर एंड पुट इन टू ल्यूक वॉम वाटर वॉट आई विल से इन कंपेरिजन आई विल से दैट ना येस दिस वाटर इज हॉट वाटर सो If you want to check that whether that material is hot or cold, you can check by the comparison or by the sense of touch. So sense of touch can only method work if you are making the comparison between the two things. Clear? But this sense of touch cannot work properly at each and every case. If the water is too much boiling, for example, at hundred degrees Celsius, that water is boiling, then you you will take your finger and you will put into the water. Obviously, no. In that case, we have to choose some kind of apparatus in order to check the temperature. next we are having topic measurement of temperature so what do you mean by temperature temperature of an object is a degree of hotness or coldness of that object means temperature means it will give us the degree means how much this tea is hot and how much this ice is cold that much degree of hotness and coldness is going to Uh, calculated by temperature temperature will tell us the degree of hotness and coldness of any object okay and now if i want to measure the temperature of this object so i will not put my finger and then i will say that is yes, this much hot it is okay now there is many instrument are there in order to measure the temperature so which instrument we are going to measure the temperature that we will study in the further slide so next we are having si unit of temperature like each and every physical quantity we are having the si units like for length meter is there for mass kilogram is there in the similar way temperature is also a physical quantity so in uh, temperature si unit is kelvin okay and other units which we are using in order to know the temperature that other units are degree celsius which we are going to represent by this also degree celsius like this okay and second unit we are having fahrenheit that is degree fahrenheit but with the kelvin we are not going to use any kind of degree kelvin we are going to represent like this simple capital k only okay so si unit of temperature is kelvin and other units which we are using is degree celsius and degree fahrenheit 
Next we are having thermometers. So this is the instrument which we are going to use in order to know the temperature. As I have given the example for tea. If here am I having for example tea and I want to check this tea is how much hot. I will not use my finger and I will check that yes this much hot this tea is okay. It is not like that. I am going to use the thermometer in order to check the temperature of any object. So thermometer work is to uh, device is to measure the temperature. So here we are having two kinds of thermometers. One we are having laboratory thermometer and second we are having clinical thermometer. As the name suggests laboratory thermometer. Laboratory thermometer means that thermometers which we are going to use in the laboratory. Laboratory means like a chemistry lab or like physics lab or you can say simply science lab. Okay. So in the physics or chemistry lab in the laboratories which thermometer we are using that thermometer is a laboratory thermometer. And the thermometer which we are using in clinics or used by doctors, that thermometer is a clinical thermometer. Okay. Now we are going to start with the laboratory thermometer. As the name suggests laboratory thermometer, laboratory means that th thermometer which we are going to use in the laboratories like physics lab, chemistry lab. So that in that lab which is thermometer we are going to use in order to check the temperature of any liquid, that thermometer is known as laboratory thermometer. So in a laboratory thermometer, it consists of a capillary tube of a glass. This kind of capillary tube is there inside this thermometer. At one end of the capillary tube, a thin glass bulb is there. Here this is a capillary tube, this one is a capillary tube and here at the one side thin glass bulb is there and this bulb is filled with a pure mercury. Inside actually mercury is there whenever we are going to use this thermometer. For example in the physics lab I want to check the temperature of this liquid. Okay. So what I will do? I will take the laboratory thermometer and I will put this thermometer inside the beaker. But one condition is there. We need not to touch the thermometer with the base of beaker or with the sides of beaker. We have to just put like this only. Okay. And inside this laboratory thermometer, this mercury is filled. When mercury uh, come in contact with the hot liquid, it is also going to get heat. So by taking the heat, it will expand. This mercury level will expand and up to how much content it expand that reading we will note and from that reading we will come to know what is the temperature of the liquid. Okay, so by this way we can use the laboratory thermometer in the physics or chemistry lab in order to know the temperature but main problem is here that whenever we are checking the like temperature of this liquid we have to keep the thermometer inside only and inside only we have to check that what is the temperature okay we cannot take the thermometer outside and then we can check no if you will take the thermometer outside then mercury level will gradually fall down instantly it will fall down into the bulb and we are not able to check the temperature of that liquid so problem is this only we have to check inside only whenever the thermometer is inside only the hot liquid that time only we have to check that what is the temperature of that liquid and this capillary tube is protected by a thick glass tube here outside one thick glass tube is there and that glass tube is called stem and markings are made on the stem from that markings we are able to know about the temperature of any liquid. Next we are having scales on thermometer. So each on each and every uh, thermometer which we are using that thermometer is having some kind of scale. First it is having lower fixed point. So lower fixed point means it is a melting point of pure ice means minimum to minimum temperature what the thermometer can show that is known as lower fixed point of that thermometer as in a case of this laboratory thermometer in the laboratory thermometer the lowest fixed point is minus 10 degree celsius lowest point lowest temperature it can show minus 10 degrees celsius and upper temperature it can show that is 110 degree celsius so in between these temperature any temperature this laboratory thermometer can show and it is very large expansion means very large graduations are there so any kind of temperature it can show either in the minus also it can show means cold materials also it can tell temperature of cold material even though it can tell the temperature of hot material also. 
so this minus 10 degree celsius which we have used that is a lower fixed point and lower fixed point you can define like this it is a melting point of pure ice the pure ice melt at which temperature that is a lower fixed point and one we are having upper fixed point upper fixed point means the maximum temperature what a thermometer can show that is a upper fixed point and if you want to write the definition you can write like this it is a boiling point of pure water means under at standard atmospheric pressure when we are boiling the water pure water and the temperature shown by that pure water is the upper fixed point okay so next topic we are having marking the lower fixed point on a thermometer how you will do the experiment in order to check that what is a lower fixed point on a thermometer so see the experiment carefully actually very simple experiment is there first of all you have to take a glass tumbler in glass tumbler you have to put the ice cubes okay when you will put the ice cubes from the upward you have to put a thermometer and after putting the thermometer for few minutes what you have to see we have to see that at what level the mercury will retain or sustain for few minutes that temperature we have to note and when we will note that temperature you will come to know that that temperature is 0 degree celsius okay so 0 degree celsius is regarded as a lower fixed point on a thermometer and similar manner we are having for the upper fixed point same apparatus same thing we are having here we have to again take the glass tumbler in glass tumbler we have to put the water okay and but in this case we have to give the heat to this water whenever we are giving heat to this water and upside we put the thermometer okay for few minutes we have to check that at what level this mercury is going to rise and the level at mercury rises and we have to check that what is the temperature of this mercury when you will check the temperature of this mercury you will check that it is the 100 degree celsius what do you will observe what do you will say you will say na that 100 degree celsius is regarded as a upper fixed point on a thermometer next topic we are having marking of degrees on a thermometer scale as we know there are three thermometer scale that is celsius scale kelvin scale and degree fahrenheit scale in each and kind of thermometer we are having some markings one we are having lower fixed point one we are having upper fixed point so we are having upper fixed point as well as we are having lower fixed point okay so whatsoever the space is there between the lower fixed point and the upper fixed point that space actually is divided into 100 equal parts this space is divided between 100 equal parts and each equal part is represented by 1 degree celsius this is the case of degree celsius if we are talking about kelvin also in kelvin also this space is regarded as 1 kelvin and in the kelvin also distance between lower fixed point and upper fixed point is 100 kelvin or 100 equal parts are there okay but yes in the case of degree fahrenheit scale in degree fahrenheit scale lower fixed point is 32 degree fahrenheit and upper fixed point is 212 degree fahrenheit when you will subtract these both term you will get as 180 degree fahrenheit means in the degree fahrenheit scale actually there are 180 divisions between lower fixed point and upper fixed point in degree celsius and kelvin 100 equal parts are there but in degree celsius scale 180 equal parts are there okay So next topic we are having reasons for using mercury as a thermometric fluid as we know in a thermometer we are using mercury as a thermometric fluid so why we are using mercury only actually many reasons are there that why we are using mercury so very first reason we are having mercury is a good conductor of heat whenever mercury taking our body temperature or whenever mercury is taking heat of any temperature mercury is going to expand why it is expanding because mercury is a good conductor of heat while expansion we can easily check the temperature of that material okay second point we are having mercury does not stick to the glass capillary tube in a thermometer actually in thermometer in the central part we are having glass capillary tube whenever mercury is moving into the glass capillary tube mercury does not stick to the walls of glass capillary tube that is why it can give us very convenient or very accurate measurement of the temperature that is why we are using mercury okay so third point we are having its freezing point is minus 39 degree celsius and boiling point is 357 degree celsius actually this mercury can show us minimum to minimum minus 39 degree celsius and maximum temperature it will show to us 357 degree celsius means it is showing us quite vast range of temperature whenever this vast range of temperature is there and we want to measure any temperature either it is lower or upper temperature we can check easily with the help of mercury but yes in some countries in some foreign countries whenever too much low temperature is there means 
from the minus 39 also too much low temperature is there in that case we are not using mercury why because mercury is showing us only minus 39 degree celsius so in that case we are using alcohol thermometer so alcohol thermometer is showing the reading below minus 39 degree celsius also but yes alcohol is a transparent so how we are able to see the temperature by the alcohol actually in the alcohol we are putting some kind of dye and whenever we are putting dye into the alcohol it can show us the reading properly clear so fourth point we are having it is easily obtained in a pure form mercury can easily obtained in a pure form and it give us accurate reading that is why we are using mercury as a thermometric fluid fifth point we are having mercury is an opaque and shiny liquid opaque and shiny liquid means whenever it is rising into the capillary tube or into the thermometer we can easily check the temperature by the level of mercury that is why if it is shiny and opaque then only we can check it properly so it is a very seen properly this fine thread can be seen properly in a capillary tube next we are having scales on thermometer as we have discussed about the three thermometers that is degree celsius degree fahrenheit and kelvin degree fahrenheit degree celsius and kelvin they all are having their fixed upper fixed point and lower fixed point and in a kelvin scale lower fixed point is 273 upper fixed point is 373 kelvin similar manner we are having degree celsius in degree celsius 0 degree is regarded as lower fixed point and 100 is as a upper fixed point and in degree fahrenheit 32 degree fahrenheit is regarded as lower fixed point and upper fixed point is regarded as 212 degree fahrenheit okay and while keeping in mind all the scales of temperature here we are going to derive the relation between three temperature scales so how we can derive the relation see carefully what you have to do you have to firstly write all the thermometer scale firstly we are having degree celsius then we are having kelvin then we are having degree fahrenheit okay then afterwards you have to put equals to in all between them clear then you have to put minus minus and here also minus then you have to write the lower fixed point of all three temperature scales lower fixed point of degree celsius is 0 lower fixed point of kelvin is 273 and lower fixed point of degree fahrenheit is 32 next you have to write divide divide and divide so here you have to write the upper minus lower fixed point so upper fixed point of degree celsius is 100 degree celsius minus lower is 0 in kelvin scale upper is 373 minus lower scale is 273 in degree fahrenheit upper fixed point is 212 degrees fahrenheit minus lower fixed point is 32 degree fahrenheit next you have to do the calculations degree celsius minus 0 will give you degree celsius over 100 is equals to k minus 273 as such over 100 after subtracting you will get 100 is equals to degree fahrenheit minus 32 as such over 180 clear then you have to do the comparison firstly i am doing the comparison between degree celsius and kelvin after comparison between degree celsius and kelvin what you will get you will get this equation okay so here you will see 100 cut with 100 in both denominator 100 is there you have to cut the denominator so degree celsius is equals to k minus 273 this we got the first relation between degree celsius and kelvin in order to solve the numericals we will use this relation fine second we are going to derive the relation between degree celsius and degree fahrenheit here you have to write the comparison degree celsius by 100 is equals to degree fahrenheit minus 32 by 180 okay so this 100 is in divide here it will go in multiply degree celsius is equals to 100 degree fahrenheit minus 32 as such over 180 as such okay zero cut with zero on two table it will be 5 by 9 so degree celsius is equals to 5 by 9 degree fahrenheit minus 32 so this relation you got as a degree celsius and degree fahrenheit clear and this relation also we will use in order to solve the numerical so you have to remember these both relations so very first numerical we are having convert 25 degree celsius into kelvin so degree celsius is given to us that is 25 degree celsius that we have to convert into kelvin as well as fahrenheit scale so firstly write the relation between degree celsius and kelvin so relation is like this degree celsius is equals to k minus 273 okay now only we have derived so degree celsius value is 25 degree celsius is equals to k minus 273 this 273 is in minus that said it will go in plus so just take it in the plus sign 25 plus 273 is equals to k so after addition of 273 plus 25 you will get the answer 298 so kelvin answer you will get it as 298 instead of 25 degree celsius you can write 298 kelvin also so now i'm going to write the relation between celsius and fahrenheit okay so what is the relation see carefully 
रिलेशन इज लाइक दिस डिग्री सेल्सियस इज इक्वल्स टू फाइव बाई नाइन डिग्री फार हिट माइनस थर्टी टू जस्ट पुट द वैल्यूज डिग्री सेल्सियस वैल्यूज गिवन टू अस ट्वेंटी फाइव इज इक्वल्स टू फाइव बाई नाइन डिग्री फार हिट माइनस थर्टी टू सो नाइन इज इन डिवाइड दैट साइड इट विल गो इन मल्टीप्लाई आफ्टर मल्टीप्लीकेशन यू विल गेट टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इज इक्वल्स टू फाइव डिग्री फार हिट माइनस थर्टी टू सो दिस फाइव इज इन मल्टीप्लाई दैट साइड इट विल गो इन डिवाइड सो फोर्टी फाइव इज इक्वल्स टू डिग्री फार हिट माइनस थर्टी टू माइनस थर्टी टू इज इन माइनस हेयर इट विल गो इन प्लस सो आफ्टर सॉल्विंग वॉट यू विल गेट यू विल गेट इट एज डिग्री फार हिट इज इक्वल्स टू सेवेंटी सेवन डिग्री फार नी फार हीट सो इंस्टेड ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस यू कैन राइट इन अ फॉर्म ऑफ फार हीट ऑल्सो दैट इज सेवेंटी सेवन डिग्री फार हीट क्लियर नेक्स्ट वील हैविंग द टॉपिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ हीट सो वॉट वॉट आर द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ हीट वेन एवर वी आर गिविंग हीट टू एनी बॉडी वॉट सो एवर चेंजेस वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन दैट बॉडी सो वेरी फर्स्ट चेंज वी आर हैविंग चेंज इन टेम्परेचर वेन एवर वी आर गिविंग टेम्परेचर और वेन एवर वी आर गिविंग हीट टू एनी बॉडी हीट टू एनी बॉडी मीन्स दैट बॉडी इज चेंजिंग इट्स टेम्परेचर वाइल्ड टेकिंग हीट इट्स टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेज एंड वाइल्ड टेकिंग हीट आउट फ्रॉम एनी बॉडी और यू कैन सी वाइल्ड कूलिंग एनी बॉडी टेम्परेचर ऑफ दैट बॉडी इज गोइंग टू रिड्यूसेज सो वेन एवर वी आर हीटिंग टू एनी बॉडी हीटिंग इंक्रीजेज टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेज वेन एवर वी आर लोअरिंग द टेम्परेचर और वी आर कूलिंग समथिंग हीट लो सो हेयर टेम्परेचर इज ऑल्सो लो क्लियर नेक्स्ट वी आर हैविंग सेकेंड इफेक्ट ऑफ हीट दैट इज थर्मल एक्सपेंशन एंड कॉन्ट्रेक्शन सो एक्चुअली वेन एवर वी आर गिविंग हीट टू एनी बॉडी दैट बॉडी इज गोइंग टू एक्सपैंड बाई इट्स लेंथ ब्रेथ एज वेल एज हाइट वाइज ओके सो वेन फॉर एग्जाम्पल हेयर आई एम गोइंग टू गिव द हीट टू दिस बॉडी दिस बॉडी इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज इट्स लेंथ मीन्स इट इज डूइंग थर्मल एक्सपेंशन एंड इन अ सिमिलर मैनर इफ आई एम टेकिंग हीट आउट फ्रॉम एनी बॉडी और वी आर कूलिंग एनी बॉडी इन अ केस ऑफ कूलिंग देर इज अ थर्मल कॉन्ट्रेक्शन मीन्स दैट बॉडी इज गोइंग टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ओके Because of thermal expansion a railway track may get deformed due to thermal expansion in summer and thermal contraction during a winter so that is why there is a space left between the railway tracks during the summer whenever there is a expansion in the railway tracks that expansion in the railway track may adjust itself in that places clear similar example we are having for telephone or electronic transmission cables they often sag between the poles during summer season on account of thermal expansion and similarly during the winter season the same cables become tight between the poles due to thermal contraction next effect of heat we are having change in state so whenever for example we are having any solid and we are giving heat to this solid so obviously this solid will converts into a liquid and when we are further giving heat to this liquid this liquid will convert into gaseous state means by giving the heat we can change solid to liquid or you can change liquid to gas but yes in the second case also if we are taking heat out of any body means if i am cooling this liquid this cooling of liquid will converts into solid state means we are changing the state by the effect of heat next effect of heat we are having chemical change chemical change means what whenever we are giving heat to any object in the presence of oxygen burning is there whenever we are burning to any substance burning will always cause a chemical change chemical change means the chemical properties of that material is going to change means after changing its chemical properties for example here paper is there whenever we are burning the paper firstly paper is having its different properties but while burning or while giving the heat this properties of the paper almost changes and it converts into for example carbon dioxide light and ash okay so there is a chemical change whenever we are giving heat to any body so next topic we are having transfer of heat so what do you mean by transfer of heat see carefully heat energy always flow from the body at higher temperature to the body at lower temperature whenever any body is there at the higher temperature so this heat will move from higher temperature to that of lower temperature see carefully i am having here spoon whenever i am heating the spoon at this part so at this part temperature is higher so this heat move from higher temperature to that of lower temperature means now this heat is going to flow from this part to this part clear and whenever this heat comes to this part we can feel also we will take the spoon and we will take it back so here you can see that heat always move from higher temperature to that of lower temperature so this transfer of heat can takes place by three modes so what are that three modes first we are having conduction second we are having convection third we are having radiation conduction takes place in solids convection takes place in liquids as well as in gases and radiation takes place in that process in that way in which there is no material medium or in which there is no particles of any substance 
clear so one by one we are going to discuss about conduction convection and radiation so here we are having firstly with the conduction so what do you mean by conduction see carefully so actually in a conduction what is happening see carefully in a conduction first of all we have to take a solid whenever we are taking solid and whenever we are taking that solid near to the heat so this heat energy will transfer to the very near particles whatsoever are there kept near the flame so that particles will take the heat energy from the candle burning candle these particles start vibrating about their fixed position whenever these particles start vibrating while taking the heat from the flame these vibration or these heat energy they will transfer to next particles the next particles also start vibrating about their mean position then these particles transfer the heat to next particles then these to next particles and these to next particles means this first layer of the particles by transferring the heat to the end of the particle so here heat will move from higher temperature to the lower temperature but without any actual movement of particles here actually particles are not changing their position moving from one point to another point they are just vibrating about their mean position and they are just transferring the energy from one layer to the another layer so here you can say that in a conduction conduction is a process of transfer of heat from hotter body to the colder end of the body in a solid but without any actual movement in the material medium particles clear the process of conduction so in regard to the conduction we are having two here main definitions conductors of heat and insulators of heat might be you are knowing this definition of conductors of heat and insulators see carefully first definition we are having conductors materials which allow the heat to pass through them materials which allow the heat to pass through them are known as conductors of heat for example iron copper brass these all are the conductors of heat in a similar manner we are having insulators of heat materials which do not allow heat energy to pass through them for example wood paper glass these materials do not allow heat to pass through them so these are known as bad conductor or you can say into insulators of heat so now we will see the applications of good and bad conductor of heat so whenever good or bad conductor of heat is there or good conductor of heat is there actually good conductor of heat is also working according to the conduction only means first of all it is giving the energy to the particles that particles will transfer the heat without any actual movement to the last particles and full fledged solid is going to heat and up so here we are going to see the applications of good and bad conductor firstly we are having very first application which we are using in our daily life that is cooking utensils are made up of metals and handles are made up of wood or plastic actually whatsoever material we have to cook that we are cooking in the cooking utensils and these cooking utensils are made up of metal why they are made up of metal because metals are good conductor of heat so whenever we are keeping the metals on a fire or we are giving heat to the metals so metals will absorb the heat into it while absorbing the heat whatsoever food is there present inside this cooking utensil that can cook very properly but yes if you want to take this cooking utensil and you want to put somewhere else so what do you will use we cannot use these part na because these parts are now hot so we are using the handle of the cooking utensil because the handle is made up of either wood or plastic as you know wood or plastic is a bad conductor of heat bad conductor of heat means it do not allow the heat of the pan to enter on on our hand and we can pick up easily and kept anywhere else okay so next application of good and bad conductor we are having copper is used as making cooling coils of air conditioners and refrigerators in air conditioners and refrigerators these kind of cooling coils are there these cooling coils are made up of copper why copper because copper is a good conductor of heat which allow the heat to pass through them and will remain or make the air conditioners or the refrigerator to remain cool okay third application we are having woolen cloths in winter we are wearing woolen cloths in winter why we are only wearing woolen cloths not the cotton cloths in winter see carefully actually in a woolen cloths here some pores are there some kind of pores are there and whenever air from the outside come to these pores air is going to trap into these pores and might be you are knowing that air is a bad conductor of heat so whenever heat particles trapped into the woolen cloth air does not allow our body heat to come outside so we can feel warm while wearing the woolen cloths that is why we are wearing the woolen cloths in winter
नेक्स्ट एप्लीकेशन वी आर हैविंग अ न्यूली लेड क्विल्ट इज वार्मर एज कम्पेयर टू ओल्ड वन वर्ट्स एवर न्यू ब्लैंकेट वी आर हैविंग नो दैट न्यू ब्लैंकेट्स आर मोर वार्मर एज कम्पेयर टू ओल्ड वन वाई बिकॉज न्यूली लेड क्विल्ट इज हैविंग मोर एयर स्पेसिस बिटवीन दैम इफ इट इज हैविंग मोर एयर स्पेसिस बिटवीन दैम मीन्स इट कैन ट्रैप मोर एयर टू इट मोर एयर मीन्स एयर इज अ बैड कंडक्टर ऑफ हीट विच डू नॉट अलाउ अवर बॉडी हीट टू कम आउट साइड मीन्स न्यूली लेड क्विल्ट विल कीप अस वॉम फिफ्थ एप्लीकेशन वी आर हैविंग two thin blankets two thin blankets are warmer as compared to taking the one single thick woolen blanket why actually whenever we are taking two thin blankets no in between these two blankets air is trapped and when air is trapped air being a bad conductor of heat do not allow our body heat to go outside that is why we are feeling more warmer whenever we are taking two thin blankets together as compared to thick woolen blanket okay next application we are having an ice box is double walled metallic box these ice cubes are double walled metallic box because the space between the wall is filled with glass wool and glass wool whatsoever glass wool is there that glass wool is a insulator of heat we do not allow the outside heat to come inside and do not allow the cooling this cooling of the ice to go outside that is why whatsoever like soft drinks are there or ice cubes are there that will remain cool into the ice box next application of heat we are having we always use hand gloves in order to take the hotter dish particles or hotter dish from the oven whenever we are taking our hands toward the oven oven is very much hot okay so we use hand gloves because hand gloves are poor conductor of heat which do not allow the heat to come into our body and we will not feel heat from these hand gloves okay next application we are having roofs of some houses are made up of asbestos sheet or clay tiles actually some roofs are made up of asbestos sheet this kind of asbestos sheet or clay tiles because asbestos sheets are bad conductor of heat which do not allow outside heat to come inside the house and whatsoever person is there inside the house that may not feel that much hot in a summer days next application we are having eskimos make their houses called igloo out of snow whatsoever eskimos are there which are living on the snow on the area of the snow so that eskimos are making the igloos and they are living inside the igloos why they are making with the snow this kind of igloos because snow is having large amount of air trapped in between the pores so as we know air is a bad conductor of heat which do not allow the inside heat to come outside or do not allow the cold breeze to come inside next application we are having birds often puff of their feathers in winter actually whenever winters are coming birds always puff of their body means they are going to swell like this why they are swelling like this because in while swelling they are trapping too much amount of air into it and whenever they are trapping air into it air being a bad conductor of heat do not allow their body heat to go outside so they may feel warm in the winter that is why they are puffing up their feathers next application of good conductor and bad conductor of heat we are having mercury is used as a thermometric liquid so as we have already discussed that why we are using mercury only as a thermometric fluid because mercury is a good conductor of heat which can expand easily while taking the heat so that is why we are using mercury as a thermometric fluid now we are going to start with the second mode of transfer of heat that is convection firstly we have discussed about conduction that can takes place only in solids but now we will see about the convection so what do you mean by convection convection is also a part of transfer of heat only means in convection also there is a transfer of heat from hotter end to the colder end of a liquid in this case we are using the liquid as in conduction we are using solid but in convection we are using the liquid only but with actual movement of particles as you see that in the conduction there is no actual movement of particle just particles are transferring the energy from one particle to another and heat can transfer from hotter body to the colder body but it is not like this case of convection actually what is happening in the case of convection see carefully how the convection takes place in liquid for example here we are having a beaker and in the beaker we filled it with a liquid okay so in a liquid as we know particles are like this means particles are away from each other so when these particles which are very near to the flame that particles will take the heat from the flame while taking the heat from the flame the particles will become hot and particles start moving upside when the particles will start moving upside they will send these colder particles downside 
when the colder particles come near the flame that colder particles will also become hotter now and while taking the heat that hotter particles also move upside like this way all hotter particles will move up colder particles will move down and one kind of convection current sets up in the liquid due to this convection current full amount of liquid is going to heat up okay so this is a process how the particles will move itself from one place to the another place and transfer the heat energy from hotter end to the colder end okay so now see the definition carefully convection is the process of transfer of heat from hotter end to the colder end of a liquid but with actual movement of the particles of liquid next we are having applications related to convection so where we are going to see this kind of convection in our daily life first application we are having moderate temperature in the coastal areas so what do you know what do you mean by coastal areas coastal area means those areas where land is very near to the sea okay you can say goa you can say mumbai that goa or mumbai or that coastal areas are very moderate temperature moderate temperature means in that areas not too much hot is there or not too much cold is there in between temperature is there always why moderate temperature is there in the coastal areas it is all because of convection see carefully how so during day time what is there during day time sun is there in the atmosphere okay so that sun is giving the radiations to each and every object so the sunlight is moving to each and every object na when the sunlight moves toward the land whatsoever particles are present on the land while taking the heat from sun these particles will become lighter while taking heat na each and every particle will become lighter and they it start moving upside so while taking the heat of while taking the heat of sun the land particles will also start moving upside okay and these lighter particles or these hotter particles will move from higher temperature to lower temperature and where is the lower temperature lower temperature is toward the sea so these hotter particles will send these cooler particles toward the land so when these cooler particles will go toward the land again from the sunlight these colder particle will become hot again it will move up again it will go toward sea again it will send the sea particles toward the land like this way convection current sets up in the coastal area so whenever there is a convection current set up in that way each and every time there is a moderate temperature because cool breeze is always moving around this okay so due to cool breeze there is a moderate temperature in the coastal areas and this process in which during day the sun is giving the heat to the land particles and land particles while taking the heat by taking the heat from the sun moves upside and move toward the sea and it will send the cold particle from sea toward the land this process is known as sea breeze clear during day time sea breeze is there and same reciprocal we are having for night also actually in the night no sun is there in the night moon is there so whenever during the day whatsoever hot particles will move toward the sea till the night time whatsoever particles are there present inside the sea now that particles will become very hot now sea is warmer now land is cooler because why land is cooler because till night whatsoever hotter particles are there that gets up and move toward the sea what is happening in the night see carefully so warmer particles from the sea warmer particles being lighter will move up and it will move and go towards the lower temperature from higher temperature particles move to towards the lower temperature and in the lower temperature land land particles will then again move to the sea particles like this also there is a it forms a convection current so means here we can see that warmer air from the sea will move towards the colder air of air of the land then these warmer air will push the colder air from the land to move towards sea and like this convection current setups and like this way moderate temperature is there at the night also during day also moderate temperature is there similarly during night also moderate temperature is there and during night whatsoever there is a movement of particles or convection current setup that is known as land breeze during day it is known as sea breeze and during night is known as land breeze next application of convection we are having ventilation in the houses in each and every houses might be you have seen that some exhaust fan are there or some windows are there why we are just using the exhaust fan or windows in order to move or in order to send whatsoever air particles or whatsoever carbon dioxide is present in our house we want to make it go outside and we want the fresh air from the outside to come inside that is why we are just giving the windows or we are giving the exhaust fan to the houses okay so houses are always provided with ventilation so this ventilation process is also based on principle of convection current how it based on principle of convection current see carefully for example this is your school okay 
and so many students are sitting in the school so students are taking oxygen from the out from the atmosphere and giving out carbon dioxide to the atmosphere so many students are giving carbon dioxide to the atmosphere okay so too much carbon dioxide is now in the school and if there is no ventilation system then because of carbon dioxide we will we will feel suffocation na? that is why we are using some kind of ventilation because carbon dioxide being lighter will move away from the school and whatsoever fresh air is there from the ventilation that fresh air will come inside the school that is why we are using the ventilation process in the houses as well as in any buildings okay so in a similar manner of ventilation we are having the third application of convection that is use of chimneys actually in a big factories smoke and hot gases are lighter because they are lighter they will rise up one path should be there na, from where they, the smoke particles will move up and that path is the chimneys from the chimneys it is moving upside and escape out from the factories next application related to convection we are having air conditioner and air coolers are always fitted at higher position ACs whatever whatsoever we are using in our houses that ACs are always fitted at some higher position why because whenever they are giving the cold breeze downside so what this cold breeze is doing this cold breeze is pushing the hotter particles from the room towards upside and that hotter particles will move toward the AC then again this hotter particle by taking the cool from the AC it will become cool and then it will move downside again hotter particles will move upside like this convection current setup so like this convection current it ensures the more effective cooling in the room very quickly next application of convection we are having room heaters are placed at or near the floors means or on the floor we are placing the room heaters or we are placing very near to the floor why because whenever whatsoever air particles are present in this room that air particles when go towards the room heater due to the heat of room heater the particles will also get the heat and while taking the heat the particles will become lighter and when they become lighter they start moving upside and while they move upside they will send the cooler particles to go downside and when these cooler particles will come near the room heater then again this cooler particle will become hot and again it will move up like this way full room is going to become hot due to the room heater next application we are having the freezers of refrigerator are fitted at the top of the refrigerator why because when they are fitted at the top of the refrigerator it ensure the easy circulation of cold air downwards and hot air will move upside like this way convection current setup and the full refrigerator is become cold now we are going to start with the third mode of transfer of heat that mode of transfer of heat is known as radiation so in conduction we have studied there is a transfer of heat from hotter body to the colder body in solids and without any actual movement of particles in convection we have studied that there is a transfer of heat from hotter body to the colder body with actual movement of particles like in liquids but in radiation in radiation also there is a transfer of heat from hotter body to the colder body but here there is a no need of material medium actually it is not going to heat up the space in between it without the space only without the air particles only it will transfer the heat so the process in which the transfer of heat takes place from hotter body to the colder body without heating the space in between them is known as radiation the example for this is the sun actually what so sun radiations are coming towards the earth as we know in the earth okay air particles are there but sun is not in the earth sun is out of the earth out of the earth is where here for example earth is there and here for example sun is there okay so whenever this heat radiation from the sun have to come inside this earth in between the earth and the sun there is a vacuum created because in between no air particles are there air particles are only there inside the earth okay in between no air particles are there na? but still light radiation or heat radiation comes from the sun and move towards the earth so how this heat radiation or how this heat move from the sun to the earth without any material medium due to the radiation okay so in radiation there is a no need of material medium without material medium also in the vacuum also the heat radiation or heat can move from hotter body to the colder body okay this we are having example related to conduction convection as well as radiation for example here we are having a burning fire and when we will take the like any conductor towards the burning fire this conductor firstly take the heat toward this point after some process due to conduction we will also feel hot at this colder part also this is a process of conduction similar manner we are having the convection also whatsoever air particles are present in this region that at air particles will take up the heat from the sun 
uh, that air particles will take take up the heat from the fire and while taking the heat from the fire the air particles will become hot and it will give us the heat this is a convection but in the radiation whenever we no air particle is there here for example vacuum is there in a vacuum also the we are feeling hot whenever we are standing near the fire because in this way no conduction no convection is there in this way radiation is there okay so next topic we are having absorption and reflection of thermal radiation actually black bodies are good absorber also of heat plus black bodies are good radiator of heat also see carefully how black bodies are the bodies which absorb more and more heat from the surrounding okay black bodies absorb more heat but instead if you are talking about white bodies white bodies are good reflector of heat whenever on the white bodies heat are coming from the outside the white bodies reflect back heat very easily they do not allow the heat to go inside our body but yes if we are wearing a black colored clothes black colors or black colored clothes will absorb more and more heat into our body and we feel very hot due to the black color okay so black colors are good absorber of heat as well as black bodies are good radiator of heat also radiator of heat means whatsoever hot bodies are there na that hot bodies are always always giving out the heat radiations they are always sending the heat radiations out similar manner we are having for the black bodies also black bodies are also acting like a good radiator radiator means they are passing or they are radiating or giving the heat out to the environment very easily but instead if you are talking about the white bodies white bodies are very poor radiator of heat poor radiator of heat means it will just reflect back the heat it will not take out our heat or not take out the heat radiations and reflect it in the outside so that is why black bodies are good radiator and white bodies are poor radiator of heat first application of radiation we are having the bottom of the cooking utensil is painted black might you have ever observed in the kitchen that whatsoever cooking utensils we are using in the kitchen that cooking utensil base is always painted black why it is painted black as i already told firstly that black bodies are very good absorber of heat good absorber of heat means whenever we are putting the utensils on a fire or on a heat the black bodies are absorbing more and more heat from that fire absorbing more and more heat means the cooking of the food will takes place very easily that is why the base of the cooking utensils are painted black but yes the sides of the cooking utensils are painted sparkly bright why they are painted bright because whatsoever heat is present inside the like pan that heat cannot emit outside from the black color because black color is a good emitter also so the heat do not emit outside means we have to cook the food properly so that is why it is painted sparkling brightly why because whatsoever heat is present inside the pan that heat will reflect back into the pan only and the food will cook easily okay having second application related to radiation second application we are having the radiators of automobile and air conditioner are painted black the radiators of air conditioner or the car why it is painted black because as we know black is a good emitter of heat or you can say good radiator of heat as black is a good radiator of heat so whatsoever heat is generated into the car engine that heat it will collect and it will give outside to the surrounding so that our car parts engine will not get heated up due to the friction and all okay that is why we are using here black color so that it can emit whatsoever heat is present inside the car it can emit outside through the black color okay third application we are having pipes of solar cooker and containers of solar cooker are painted black always pipes of solar cooker are also painted black from outside why because as we know solar cookers are working on the basis of sunlight and if they are absorbing more and more sunlight in that case only solar cooker will work properly no so black color will what help us black color will help to absorb more and more sun radiation into it and whatsoever thing is there inside the solar cooker that can cook properly okay next application we are having firemen wear shiny brass cap why they are wearing shiny brass cap shiny means whatsoever heat radiations are going or coming towards their head that heat radiation will reflect back due to the shiny surface of the cap shiny surface or light colored object will always reflect back the heat radiation as the cap is shiny so it will reflect back the whatsoever sunlight is coming on their head it will reflect back so that their head can maintained at cool okay 
Next application of radiation we are having sand is a good absorber as well as good reflector of heat. Might be you have seen in Rajasthan about the sand that during daytime sand is very much hot. Why it is very much hot? Because sand during daytime it is acting like a good absorber of heat. During daytime as sun is there, due to sun it is absorbing more and more heat in inside itself. Okay, and whenever it is absorbing more and more heat, being a good absorber of heat. it is becoming more and more hot during the day time but actually in the night time what is happening actually in the night time this same sand is acting like a good emitter whatsoever total heat it absorbed during the day time now it is a time to act like a good emitter and sand is emitting the heat trapped inside and giving out to the environment that is why at night it fully become the cool okay next application of radiation we are having a cloudy night is much warmer as compared to clear night why actually what is happening there in a cloudy night clouds are there in the atmosphere okay so whatsoever heat is there on the earth surface that heat when it goes toward the clouds as clouds being a good reflector of heat because clouds are light colored no so it will reflect back the heat to the earth surface only so when it reflect heat the back to the earth surface only so it will allow the earth to become more and more warm means it do not allow the heat to go upside to into the space it do not allow it just reflect back the heat into the earth surface and that is why earth surface is becoming more and more warmer next we are having thermos flask so what do you mean by thermos flask see carefully actually whatsoever bottle we are using in our daily life which keeps the hot liquid hot and cold liquid cold for few minutes or few hours that bottles are known as thermos flask and thermos flask is invented by sir james dever in 1890 and by his name dever it is also known as dever flask clear actually this thermos flask is a double walled container made up of thin glass this thermos flask is a double walled container made up of thin glass and the outer surface of the inner wall and the inner surface of the outer wall they both are silvered polished this wall is also silver polished this wall is also silvered polished why it is silver polished see carefully for example inside hot liquid is there fine and this heat can move or come towards this also na so if it is silver polished silver can reflect back the heat into the liquid only and this heat will go back into the liquid and liquid do not lose its heat plus these both walls are having vacuum also means from this wall air is taken out means we are take, making it the vacuum why we are making it vacuum if for example heat is coming out from this liquid that heat will not move from vacuum by the conduction or convection because in conduction and convection we have to use the particles or medium in between them if there is no air particles no medium will be there means by conduction or convection this heat particle will cannot come outside or by radiation if it comes outside then there is a silver polish silver polish can reflect back the heat into the liquid it will remain hot only and plus here we are having the opening also whatsoever opening is there of the bottle that opening is also evacuated evacuated or you can sealed properly sealed sealed why because whatsoever heat can move from this way it cannot move because here tap is sealed properly clear and now this flask whatsoever flask is there in between the thermos flask that flask is a contained in a metal or a plastic case here outside we are having either metal or plastic case and inside we kept a flask okay and this flask is retained or spotted at this pads so that it cannot the heat cannot move from these pads also downside clear and mouth is also sealed downside is also sealed here also no radiation no conduction can takes place that is why whatsoever hot material or cold material is there it can remain cold or hot for the few minutes or few hours okay This is all about your chapter number 5th class 7th physics ICSC that is heat if you like the explanation please like it share it and subscribe our youtube channel thank you so much